In this video, we're going to discuss auditing and the ways we can implement auditing in Windows Server 2012 R2, as well as how it can be useful to us. Within Windows Server 2012, uh, we need the ability to observe events as they occur. One of the places that we actually see some of these events, and you can get a good idea of what we're actually watching, is in Event Viewer. If we open up Event Viewer and you see the Windows logs that exist, one of those logs is the security log. And this one's usually the most um, difficult to grasp for new administrators because there's audit successes and there's audit failures. This is where auditing is reported. And let's just take a step back and understand what is auditing. Auditing is simply keeping track of things that happen whether they succeed or whether they fail. And that's exactly what we're doing here in the security log. There's no warnings, there's no errors, there's no informational events here. These are simply things that happened and when they happened and the accounts that they happened to and whether they succeeded or failed. That's what auditing is all about. It's just simply watching. So in order to make these useful, we need to understand what we're choosing to audit and being able to find the actual events that relate to what we're looking for. So, for example, in your system you might want to know when users log on and log off. Well, there are going to be a ton of log on and log off events generated and that might be useful to you to be able to look back and monitor when these things happen. So, how can we really take a look at where these settings are generated from? Well we can go into group policy to do that. I have a simple domain, a fresh install of a domain with just a couple of minor modifications. And if I take a look at the default domain policy, I can look at some of the audit settings. Auditing does happen within the computer configuration because the computer is what's doing the auditing. Even though that computer will audit users, that are attached to that system, the computer is the one responsible for doing the auditing. Now there's a couple of places we can look here in group policy for auditing. Within local policies, we have an audit policy. And in the default domain policy, there's nothing defined here. We're not overriding the defaults of what Windows is doing. Now that's not to say that there's no auditing going on. For example, if we wanted to, for example, take a look at what's happening in account logout events on our domain, you can see that some of these have predefined options. For example, default values on server additions, like what I'm using, includes several areas that auditing will actually happen. Now if you're curious of what an account logon event really is, you can always look at this explain tab and it'll tell you exactly what an account logon event really entails. Now underneath the surface, account logon means that we're trying to validate credentials. So anytime the computer that the user is using is validating these credentials, an account logon event can happen. Now that might happen actually a lot more than you might expect. Sometimes even simply using privileges on a new server can actually generate an account logon. So keep an eye on these and get a good understanding of what all of these mean. For example, account management should be pretty obvious to you. A user account is created, changed, or deleted. We may want to specifically monitor this. And you'll notice that by default, client and server editions of Windows already do some auditing, specifically on the successes. But let's say we wanted to change that behavior and we wanted to make sure that we know anytime an account is created successfully or anytime somebody tries to create an account and fails. Maybe that's somebody attacking our system. If that's something that we deem necessary to watch, we need to define those policy settings for both the successes of account management and the failures of account management. Now, there's no way for Windows to tell if the user's actions are legit. 
all they can do is tell you that something happened. Now, if a user fails to type in their password correctly, for example, that doesn't mean you have a hacker on site. It might mean somebody left their caps lock button on or something like that. So the computer cannot judge this. We as the security folks and the administrators need to be able to judge this. So we can define this setting and this is going to override these defaults on all of our computers in the domain because I'm selecting the default domain policy. And now all account management events on all the computers in the domain will be monitored for successes and failures. There's also another place that we can work on audit policy and it's here in the advanced audit policy area. We can manage things here as well. For example, we were looking at the account management and the account logon events policies. Now these are pretty broad categories, but within the account or I'm sorry, the audit policies section here in the advanced audit policy, account logon can mean several different things. Maybe some of these we want to audit and some of these we can safely ignore. So this gets us to more granular control over what's happening. Maybe we only need to monitor certain types of account management, not every single type of account management. So when you think of this audit policy, the one that we've had around for a long time in Windows, these are painting with a very broad brush. These are much more specific in their use. So if you like audit policy but it still generates way too much for you, you might consider using the advanced audit policy. These are much more specific in their purpose. For example, we can audit just user account management. Maybe we're not so concerned, and this is all relative, but maybe we're not so concerned about computer account management in our particular case. I mean, we can't audit every single thing that happens on every single server, or we'd need an army of people to simply monitor, monitor our audit logs just for even an individual user. You saw in my event viewer, I have 215,000 audited events. It becomes overwhelming to monitor all of the things that our system might be trying to monitor and audit. So we need to be a little more precise and we need to know what we're looking for. That being said, if you're looking for something specific, you can definitely filter this down. So sometimes grabbing more data is a good thing. This really depends on your own individual need. Now we can configure user account management successes and failures without having to include every single other type of audit within the account management section. So that's a pretty useful definition of how we can choose our auditing. Now another thing we can take a look at here while we're in group policy is the default domain controllers policy. As you may guess, it makes more sense to hold a domain controller to a stricter set of policies than say an ordinary Windows 7 or Windows 10 computer. So we can look in the security settings and the local policies and the audit policy of our domain controller or even into the advanced audit policies of our domain controller. And we can set things differently here if we choose. That way our domain controllers may log account management events differently than say an account created on a member server or a Windows 7 PC. So this can often be a nice option for you to use the auditing at the domain controllers level. Now that being said, you may not want to actually modify the default domain controllers policy. You may choose to create another GPO and link it here to the domain controllers OU. That way you can leave the defaults intact and then you can create your own audit policy from underneath that. There's also the capability of doing some auditing through the command line. If I open up a command prompt, there's a command called auditpol.exe. And if we want to do some simple commands here, we can do a slash get and we can do a slash category colon asterisk. And this is going to show us how our system is being audited. We're simply 
using a command line tool to check on this stuff. So as you can see there are quite a few areas already monitoring for successes and failures. This computer happens to be a domain controller so it may be held a little bit higher standard than an ordinary Windows PC but there's certainly a lot of areas that I've left the auditing out. You can also modify various audit policies from this command and this can be very useful for you if you're doing any batch file uh, scripting. So if you need to granularly add in auditing for certain user accounts, certain computers, things like that, you can do that through auditpol.exe and you wouldn't have to necessarily run a group policy object for all of these individual users that you might need certain policies on. So this can be a really handy way to handle the situation as well. And there you have it. That is auditing in a nutshell and how we set it up and configure it. And just remember that all of these audit events will dump into your security log in Event Viewer.